Hello Year 5 and welcome to your next math lesson. So we're going to be using the skills we've learned in the last two days, multiplying two and three digit numbers by one. I'm going to make it more difficult for you today. We're going to look at multiplying four digits by one. But before we do that, it's time to warm up your brain. So pause the video and have a go at the questions on the screen. Okay, number one's easy. 20 add 20 add 20 add 20. Well, we know that that is going to give us 80. Number two, four times 20, well, we know that two lots of four are eight. So if we're multiplying that by 20, we know that's going to give us 80 as well. Four multiplied by 200, well, four lots of 200 is going to give us 800. And four multiplied by 400, well, that's the same as saying four times four multiplied by 100. So it's going to be 16 multiplied by 100. It's going to give us 1,600. Now, an easy way that you could have worked out that one we know that 4 times 200 is half of 4 multiplied by 400. So if we're looking for 4 lots of the 200, we could just double it. And double, or 2 times 800, is 1,600. Okay, so let's consider this question on the screen. So calculate 3,223 by 3. So let's use our place value counters to help us with our lessons. So... This is going to be our written calculation. Let's see what that looks like using counters. So here's an example of our thousands, hundred, tens, and ones. So this is 3,223 represented. However, we're multiplying this by three, so we need this three lots, okay? So let's start off. So three multiplied by three, so we're counting the ones here, we have nine, okay? Here we're then going to multiply 20 by three, so we need to count these things. We've got 20, 40, 60. So our value is going to be a six here. Okay, so 2 multiplied by 3 gives us 6. Hundreds, we're doing 200 multiplied by 3. We have 1, 2, 2, 4, 6. We have 6 again. So we have 6 lots of our 100. Then we're going to multiply our thousands of 3 by 3. We've got 3, 6, 9. So we have 9 lots of our thousands. So our answer is 9,669. Now let's consider this question. There are 2,114 seats in a theatre. Now the theatre is fully booked for three shows. How many people attend overall? Pause the video and have a think. What calculation do you think I'm going to need to do? Okay, so we will need to do the sum 2,114 multiplied by 3. Okay, so this is going to be our written calculation. Let's model this using our place value. So we have four ones, one ten, one hundred, and two thousands. However, because we're multiplying by 3, we need three lots of our place value counters. Okay, so let's start with our zero. So 4 multiplied by 3, we have 4, 8, 12. Now we can exchange 10 of those, okay, and we can exchange them for our tens. So we're going to add our tens onto the bottom, okay, so we're exchanging one lot of tens, and clear we can see we have two ones left over. So we're going to write our two in our ones value. Then we're going to move on to multiplying tens. We're going to do one mul 10 multiplied by 3. Well, we know we've got 10, 20, 30, but we need to add the additional ones. So we have four lots of tens, so we're going to write four. Then we're going to look at our hundreds. 100 multiplied by 3. Well, I can see I have 3 lots of 100, so therefore I have 3. And then we're going to do 2,000 multiplied by 3. So as I look at my columns, I can see 2, 4, 6. So I have 6 thousands in my column. So therefore, 6,342 people will attend to the theatre. Now, Tiny's done a calculation here that 2,420 multiplied by 4 is 968. Pause the video. Can you spot Tiny's mistake? Okay, so I think that Tiny might have done a different calculation here. So I think he's done this calculation of 242 multiplied by 4. Now my first clue is I started with a number in the thousands. If I'm multiplying, I know that my number's getting bigger. Yet somehow I end up with an answer that's smaller than 2420. So I know there's been a mistake. So I think he's done this sum and he's just forgotten to add the zero and done the thousands. But let's just double check his sum anyway. So two, lots of, uh, two times 4, we know in our 4s, column in our ones column we have eight when we look at our tens we multiply by four by four well i can see i have too many tens in my column so let's exchange them over for a hundred and i can see that i have six left over and now i've exchanged those tens for a hundred so now i can count my hundreds i have two four six eight add that additional one is going to be nine okay so looking at that answer i can clearly see that that's the sum he's done because he has the right answer but for the wrong calculation so let's have a go at fixing the problem for tiny 
So we're going to represent our 2,420. Now we know there's no ones, okay, so there's no zero, so we have a zero for our ones value, but we need this calculation four times, okay? So this is what our written calculation method is going to look like. So let's try and work out the actual answer. So zero multiplied by four, well, we know that anything multiplied by zero is always going to be zero, and we can see we have no ones in our column. So we're going to put our zero there. Let's have a look at our tens. We have 20 multiplied by 4. So we have a look at our columns. We have 2, 4, 6, 8. So I have 8 lots of tens. Okay, so we're going to write our 8 value in tens. Then we're going to move on and look at our hundreds. 400 multiplied by 4. Well, I can see from looking at my hundreds at the moment, I have too many. Okay, so let's exchange 10 of those over and add them into our thousands column. So let's add that fat value over as so we're going to move it into our thousands column. Now we can work out how many hundreds. So here I can see I have six lots of 100, therefore my value here is six. Now looking into our thousands, we're going to be 2,000 multiplied by 4. Well, I know that 2 multiplied by 4 is 8, so then that's going to be 8,000. However, I need to remember to add the additional one on the bottom, which is going to give us 9,000. So the answer that Tiny was looking for to the correct calculation was 2,420 multiplied by 4 is 9,680. So all we can see here is he's actually forgotten to multiply with the zero and done the thousands. Over to you to have a go at doing questions one to four on your worksheet. Okay, let's consider this sum. 3,504 multiplied by five. Now, here is a four digit number, but my place value has five. And let me think about why. So I instantly know if I was to multiply by five by my biggest numbers, my thousands, I know that five multiplied by 3,000, so three times five, it's going to give me 15,000. Now, if I write the number 15,000, that answer has five digits in it, which means at some point from my thousands, I'm going to have to exchange, meaning I'm going to end up with a five digit number. So this is going to be my extra column. So 3,000 multiplied by five is going to be 15. So let's write our number up on here. So this is 3,504. Now I'm multiplying by five, so I need this number five times, okay? Here is my written calculation. So let's start with our first one. So four multiplied by five. Well, I know four multiplied by five is 20. Now I can't fit 20 into my one box. I can see from my value counters, I actually have too many in here. So we can exchange the first 10 and we can move them over into the tens column. So let's exchange them for another 10. Now I am also left with another 10. So we can exchange those over and change them into tens as well. So my answer is going to be zero for this first column because I'm actually carrying that two tens across instead. So although my value is still zero, I've still managed to change over those two tens and exchange them into the next column. Now for my tens column, I'm doing zero multiplied by five. Now, same as before, I know that multiplying anything by zero gives us zero. However, we have the additional two tens from our calculation before. So I need to add those two tens into the column. Looking at our hundreds, 500 multiplied by 5, well I can see I have far too many hundreds in my column. So let's exchange those first hundreds over and we'll add them to our thousands column. But having looked at that, I have another set of hundreds that I can add over. So I'm going to exchange those two lots of 10 hundreds for two thousands and I'm going to add them into my next column. So now I can see I'm left with five hundreds, so I'm going to add my five hundreds and here I've added those additional two lots of 10 hundreds over into my thousands column. Now let's have a look at our thousands column. I can see here, yet again, I have far too many thousands. So let's exchange those thousands over. Okay, so here is 10,000. Let's exchange them over for a 10 thousands counter. Okay, so I'm going to exchange that one lot of 10 thousands over into my thousands column. And now I'm going to work out how many thousands I have over. So that value is going to be seven. Now originally, I didn't have anything in the thousands column, so I actually have nothing to multiply here. But because I have my additional 10,000 at the bottom, I still need to add that at the end of my sum. So here, my answer is 17,520. Now let's consider this. We don't always have to use the written method to be able to work out our answers. So here it's really important to know our multiplication facts to help us. So let's consider this question. If I know that 112 multiplied by 5 is 560, how can I work out 113 multiplied by 5? So let's use an area model to help us work this out, okay? So here we can use our array of 112 multiplied by 5. Okay, so we're going to use our area model here, which we know we've looked at working our area from the module we completed last week. So 112 multiplied by 5 gives us 560. 
but I want to work out what 113 is. So I've made this number one times bigger. So I need to add one more lot of my five onto the end, okay? So all I need to do is add these two numbers together. Now it's a complicated written sentence. I know 113 multiplied by five is going to be 112 multiplied by five, so 560, add the additional five. Give me the answer 565, okay? So because I know that fact, I know I just need to add the additional five on to be able to help me work out that sum. So now let's consider the information we know from the previous slide. So if I know that 113 times 5 is now 565, how can I work out 113 multiplied by 6? Okay. So this time around, we're making this length bigger. So rather than having five lots of 113, I need six lots of 113, which means I need to add an additional 113 to my answer. So let's consider that 30, 113 multiplied by 6 is going to be 113 multiplied by 5, it's my original sum I started with, add that additional 113, giving me the answer of 678. So all I need to do is add 113 to my original number because I've made this side one times longer now rather than that side. So you're going to need to know the information from the last slide to help you with the last question on your paper. So if you get stuck, come back and watch the video to help you. But I'd like you to have a go at completing the questions on the sheet. I would then like you to have a go at doing the extension challenges. So you need to choose between one or the two challenges on the sheet in front of you. If you need an additional challenge, please then have a go at completing the extension task. Good luck, you five.